Ty again. Uh, whiskey Rocker here, uh, day three uh, of our whiskey review. So, uh, like I mentioned, a little festive. Uh, we uh, enjoyed Thanksgiving. Um, had some, uh, this thing actually had flowers and stuff in it. But we removed all that because they died. Um, and now it's our showpiece. Um, in any case, day three of our whiskey review, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have 30 days off from work. And uh, every day I'm going to review a different type of whiskey. Uh, today we have one from Kentucky. Now, I most of my scotches, my single malts, all those, uh, those are back home. Uh, I'm here in San Antonio. And I have a smaller collection, most of which consists of bourbon. Uh, so today we're going to do Johnny Drum, private stock. Now, I went to Specs here and uh, picked up a bunch of uh, bourbon and the guy there said, man, this is really good. So I said, well, I'm not doing much, I might as well drink it. Uh, it's bottled at 50.5% alcohol. Um, Johnny Drum Distilling Company. Kentucky Straight Whiskey. Um, handmade in the heart of bluegrass, bluegrass, Kentucky. Contains the finest ingredients and aged to the peak of matur maturity. Yielding a bouquet character and taste found only in this bourbon. Uh, this is our private stock, also known as this is our only stock. Uh, the proudest achievement in the art of bourbon making, perhaps. This is char charcoal filtered. Uh, as opposed to, I'm not opposed to filtering. Uh, I do enjoy my alley malts that are non chill filtered. Uh, this one's charcoal filtered. Uh, that same stuff that your water gets filtered through, a little charcoal filter. Um, I think you can run whisk or a. Uh, vodka through those charcoal filter like three or four or five times and make crappy vodka taste good. Try that on the next whiskey review. I'll call it the vodka review. Uh, the characters uh, and flavor of the superb sour mash. I'm not a fan of sour mash to begin with. Corn for sugar. And more of a wheat person. Uh, in case the method of production has remained unchanged through generations of the same family of master distillers. Produced in limited quantities, probably didn't have space, to ensure the finest quality possible in our old family tradition. Rich and mellow. There it is. Read the bottle. Um, now that I have 30 days, one of the other things I have decided not to, in addition to drinking whiskey every day, uh, on my first, well, on my first, you'll see I poured a little healthier pour um, I had mentioned in my first review that I'm not going to pour help, I put, take a little bit since I'm drinking every day and my wife not, may not enjoy it. She saw the video and she was a, uh, she called me out and she said, what? You're drinking such a low pour. Uh, at least enjoy the whiskey if you're going to, if you're going to have a ha hobby, you know, uh, do it to the fullest. So I said, I will do now. So, on the nose, um, I know not much about bourbon. I'm mainly a scotch, single malt type of drinker. Um, on the nose, I really can't tell much other than it's not smoky. It's definitely not peated. Sour. It's like Arbic, minus the peat, minus the smoke, minus the Scotland. Nothing was sour, flowery. Plum, like a sour plum. Take a tangerine, mix it with a plum. Plumerine. Smells like plumerine. Take a sip. Um, I'll be doing some of the other ones like Eagle Rare. That's my one of my favorite ones. 
Uh, Angel's Envy, that's also a really good one. We'll do those the next couple of days. Plum. Let's go with sour plum. Smells exactly how it tastes. Um, corn, there's that corn sweetness uh, to it. Uh, it's not bad, it's harsh, obviously, 50% uh, alcohol by volume. Uh, one thing I went, so interesting thing uh, in these lovely festive days, I went to the, uh, I went out today, yeah, and I get out sometimes. Uh, one of the other things I've started to do is work out every day. Uh, I don't always have a gut, uh, and the next, I'll probably put a before and after for myself picture. Uh, 30 days, I'm in, I've been hitting the gym. So not only drinking, good, bad, uh, workout, good. So that's one of the other things I've uh, incorporated into my routine. I've been, um, day three, whiskey review, day seven, six, seven, something like that, nonstop, uh, of going to the gym. So anyways, I was out today, saw something funny I thought I should share with people. Uh, I saw a couple, and I, I, like I said, I have recently, we, we have a newborn, and uh, you start to notice babies and children in general a little bit more. Usually I used to ignore them to find them a distraction and possible obstacles in the way at malls and uh, stores. Um, since having one of my own, I've started to notice them. It's kind of like you buy a car and you notice more of them on the, on the road. Maybe it's true. Um, in any case, I saw this, uh, this, this couple, and they had a little munchkin uh, on a leash, on a cord. They had a cord, like, like I take my dog out on a walk, and I, except it was one of those rewind ones, like my dogs, he has a kind of, he walks, he comes back, kind of has a spring, and it just rewinds in, like, like, like a cassette, I guess. Um, but no, this was like a leash, but it didn't rewind, and they had their, their child on a cord. And it just, maybe it's funny, you might find it funny, that uh, back in the day, we used to have phones that were on cords. And then we went to cordless phones. Then we went to wireless phones, right? Yet, we used to not have cords on children. I don't think I ever saw them growing up. And uh, we were wireless. And uh, since recently, I've seen kids more and more Kids put up, parents put their kids on these cords, these dog leashes. Um, maybe I'll buy one of those for my daughter. I'm sure they'll probably have a wire, wireless version where a kid kind of steps away from you. I'm not, I'm not for child abuse or anything like that, but maybe a 25 foot radius, a uh, wireless device, your kid walks around 25, 28 feet, zzz, comes right back in. The wireless zapper for kids. I just got myself an idea. Anyways. Back to the whiskey review, got off track, uh, off topic. Nothing special about this one, man. Nah, I'll probably never get, a, get another bottle. Nothing against the whiskey, I think it's, or this uh, bourbon, I think it's great. I'll enjoy it. Uh, of course, my method is I leave it in the freezer for about 15 minutes, let it cool, take the edge off. Um, smells great, smells like a cologne, uh, very flowery, very fruity, like very, very fruity, too fruity for my taste. Um, Tastes like a plum. It's like plum juice with alcohol. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that review. Maybe we'll try Johnny Drum uh, on its rating. Uh, be nice here. We go with a 75 out of 100. Uh, I think. Check up on that. Seventy-five. Seventy-five. Uh, again, not knowing much. Uh, it's definitely not up there. Uh, probably never get a bottle again. I will enjoy this bottle. I think it's good. Maybe I'm an alcoholic. Uh, but seventy-five out of hundred. Johnny Drum. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Oh look, it's uh, it won ninety percent rating on uh, San Francisco World Spirits. Jim Murray Whiskey Bible rated it three stars out of ten. Out of what? You gotta know the metric. Uh, F. Paul, somebody, Spirit, Spirit Journal, Exquisite Graceful Bourbon. Probably got paid to say that. KNL Wine Merchants. What? What is this? Nothing. They haven't even said anything. KNL Wine Merchants. Whatever. 
Anyways, until next time, tomorrow, where we will try Angel's Envy.